I will show you how you remove your hand wheel and your entire feed regulator from your featherweight. Before we can remove the feed regulator, we have to remove the hand wheel. So let's talk a little bit about how these parts work. On your hand wheel, you'll see this chrome knob here. This is called a stop motion clamp screw. The little screw on the end is just called a stop screw. You probably noticed that when you go to wind a bobbin, so you put your bobbin winder down against the hand wheel. If you turn this to the left or counterclockwise, your hand wheel will still spin, but the counterbalance in the nose, which drives the needle bar, should not spin. Sometimes before a machine has been restored or if it's really dirty, you can turn that screw all the way counterclockwise as far as it will go and you'll still notice that this spins. A lot of times that's because it's so dirty inside the hand wheel. But the idea is whenever everything's working properly and this is clean as it should be, this will not spin and your needle bar will not go up and down when you wind a bobbin. So that's a good reason to take this off and clean it from time to time. So let's start on the hand wheel. And the first thing that we have to do is remove this screw right here. And we just remove it by unscrewing it. It is counterclockwise to take it out. So first we're taking out the stop screw. And we'll just lay that aside. Now we can go ahead and take our stop motion clamp screw and you may hear me call this the clutch from time to time. I have no idea why I do that, but this is what I'm talking about. If you start spinning it counterclockwise, it should just come off. And already I can see how dirty this is. So that's going to be cleaned up. The little screw that we took off, you'll notice it's different looking. The threads only go partially the way down and then you have kind of like just a little stud here at the end. This part goes all the way through the stop motion clamp screw and pokes out the back. Then it hits on this stop motion clamp washer and that's what keeps you from turning this all the way off when you're just trying to turn on the stop motion feature to wind a bobbin. So on the end of your hand wheel, you should have a little round ring-like washer and it should just come off with your fingers. So this is something that we'll put back on after we've cleaned it. Now, you should be able to pull off your hand wheel, but you're going to be working around your belt. So one of the things that you can do if you want is loosen your motor, which there's a screw right here, and that will make it so you can raise and lower your motor and you'll have a little bit of slack in your belt. So if I raise the motor up, and then pull on my hand wheel, I have a little bit more slack and I should be able to get the hand wheel all the way off, which I'm doing it around the camera. Now, see how I'm kind of, I'm just kind of wiggling this and pulling. There we go. Here is our hand wheel. So we wanna clean out inside the hand wheel. A lot of oil gets in there and that's probably why the stop motion feature wasn't working. All these parts are just dirty and gunked up. So we'll set this aside and you should be able to get your belt to slide off the end of the motor pulley. 
It just takes a little twisting. So this belt I'm going to replace with probably a super belt from the featherweight shop. It's sort of a V belt. It fits in the grooves of the hand wheel really well. I prefer them over this toothed style kind of belt. So that's it. That's all there is to removing the hand wheel. So we have the hand wheel itself, the stop motion clamp washer, the stop motion clamp screw, and the stop screw. And I put these parts all together in a little bag until I'm ready to clean them. Now we can remove our feed regulator from the machine. And that is this part right here. So we're going to have two screws here that we're going to take out on the little indicator plate that we have that tells us what stitch length we are sewing at. Before I take these off, I'm going to take this screw out here. And you will need a heftier screwdriver for this part. So this one is left to loosen. And I just find it's helpful to hold on to the machine make sure my screwdriver really fits into the slot. And then this is also left to loosen counterclockwise. Now when this screw comes off, you're going to notice that there is a washer on the end. This is sort of like a spring washer. It gives us some tension when we raise and lower this lever here for the feed regulator. So you'll see it has three little prongs on it. And it also, you'll notice they're kind of bent in a certain direction. So they go on bending toward the machine, not away from the machine. So we have our screw and our washer We'll set those aside and be prepared to get dirty. These parts are always really gunked up. Now we can remove these two screws here. So now that we took that screw out, this should just be flopping around. You didn't break it. That's just because we don't have this screw holding it in place with this spring washer. So it doesn't matter which one you take out first, just be gentle, they are some of these softer screws. So there's one, and I just put it with the other screw I took out. There's no like top or bottom, both screws will fit in either of the holes, so don't worry about mixing them up. There's the other screw. Now you'll see this lever for the feed regulator should just pull right out of your sewing machine. Now we don't stop here as far as taking this apart. You should have a little nut that goes up against the feed regulator itself. And we want to loosen this nut so we can actually unscrew this lever from the feed regulator. So you will need either a very small wrench or something in order to get this to unscrew. But the key is first, loosen this nut. So I like to do this on a table. I do not have a little wrench that will work on this nut. I keep looking for one that small and I still haven't found one. So a lot of times I just use my little needle nose pliers. I get a good grip on it and I just hold it and turn the feed regulator. 
And now see this will totally unscrew from this lever. We set that aside, then twist the little nut off. That way we can clean all these parts. And if we tried to clean this all together, I would worry about you know whatever we're cleaning it with resting inside and maybe rusting. I like to know that they're good and dry when I'm done. Here's our little indicator plate. And this is called a regulating thumb nut. And it's what we use when we want to lock in our stitch length. So this will screw all the way off the little lever or feed reversing handle is one of the technical names that I found for it. it has a long way to go. There it goes. So we have our feed reversing handle regulating thumb nut. This is the feed regulator itself. This is our indicator plate. Two screws for our indicator plate. The hinge screw. I don't think I mentioned that. This is a hinge screw and the washer that goes in the hand wheel end to hold the feed regulator in place. It screws in to the feed regulator from the outside of the machine. Don't forget your little nut that goes on the feed reversing handle. And that's it. You've taken it off. There's still one little part though that you need to remove if you are brave. Do you see this silver part right here? It should spin when you touch it with your finger. It's what this feed regulator slides onto. And I'd like to call it a slide block, but it's not a block, it's a circle. So anyway, this little part should just come off and you can just kind of take your fingers in, pull it to the right, and just keep it between your fingers and you can pull it off. And we will clean this up and put it back on. And it can be a little tricky to get back on, but have some patience, you'll be able to do it. Now we can get in here on this little stud that this part actually slides onto. We'll clean it off, we'll apply some fresh oil to it, and then we can put it all back together. So we did it. We've removed our hand wheel and our feed regulator from the machine. So next time, I think we will start with the bobbin winding parts and maybe we can get this light out. So I'll see you again real soon. Bye.